Welcome everyone. I hope that you are safe and healthy. Chemistry, Chapter 6, Section 2, Covalent Bonding and Molecular Compounds, Part 1. Before discussing Section 2, let's review Section 1. What type of bonding would be expected between the following atoms? Fluorine and lithium, sulfur and copper, bromine and iodine, if you know that the electronegativity of fluorine equals 4, lithium equals 1, sulfur 2.5, copper 1.9, bromine 2.8, and iodine 2.5. Pause the video till you finish. Solution. First, fluorine and lithium. The electronegativity of fluorine equals 4 and that of lithium equals 1. So the difference in electronegativity between the two atoms 4.0 of fluorine minus 1.0 for lithium equals 3.0. And the difference of electro in electronegativity here larger than 1.7, so the bond is ionic bond. Second, sulfur and copper. The electronegativity of sulfur 2.5 and that of copper 1.9, so the difference will be 2.5 minus 1.9 equals 0 0.6, and 0 0.6 lies between 0 0.3 and 1.7. So it's a polar covalent bond. Third, bromine and iodine. The electronegativity of bromine 2.8 and that of iodine equals 2.5. So the difference equals 2.8 minus 2.5 equals 0 0.3. And here the type of bond is nonpolar covalent bond. Okay, let's start in section two. Objectives of our section to define molecule and the molecular formula. Explain the relationship between potential energy and the distance between atoms. Describe bond length and bond energy. Recognize and apply the octet rule. Draw Lewis structure for molecules containing single bonds, multiple bonds, or both. What's a chemical formula? We know that the chemical formula, a group of symbols and numerical subscripts. What does the chemical formula show? It shows the relative numbers of atoms of each kind in a chemical compound. For example, here we have covalent compounds and ionic compounds. Covalent compounds such as carbon dioxide and water methane gas and ammonia gas. Iron compounds such as sodium chloride, potassium bromide, calcium chloride, and sodium sulfide. This is the chemical formula of carbon dioxide, and this is the chemical formula of sodium chloride. But what's the difference between them? In covalent compounds, There are units, separate units, called molecules. So the covalent compounds consist of molecules, consist of separate units, separated from each other. Here, molecule, another molecule, a third molecule, and a fourth one. And here is another example. Example here, molecule, another molecule, third molecule, and the fourth molecule. Consist of separate units. While in the case of ionic compounds, no separate units. The atoms are attracted to each other. Here, sodium chloride. Atoms of sodium and the atoms of chloride are arranged in a certain arrangement, but not separated from each other. So, NaCl gives what? One sodium and one chlorine, and this is the ratio between them. If you count the number of atoms of sodium and the number of atoms of chlorines, you will find that they are equal. Here, 30 atoms of chlorine and 30 atoms of 
sodium. So 30 to 30 is 1 to 1. Another example is sodium sulfide. If you count the number of atoms here, no unit Na2S. Here you can't find two atoms of sodium and one atom of sulfur separated from other atoms or from other units. No. They are all linked together. But if you count the number of sodium atoms here, you will find them about 60. And the number of sulfur atoms about 30. So the ratio is 2 to 1. So Na2 and S1. So this is a meaning of show the relative numbers of atoms of each kind. So the definition includes the formula for covalent compounds and the formula for ionic compound. And atomic represented by using atomic symbols, here symbols, and numerical subscripts, these numbers. Molecular compounds. And as mentioned, a chemical compound whose simplest units are molecules. When a compound consists of units and each unit is called a molecule, separate molecule, so they are called molecular compounds or covalent compounds. As an example here, molecule, molecule, a third one and a fourth one. And one molecule, second, third and fourth molecule. So these units or molecules, so this compound is molecular compound and this compound is a molecular compound, consists of molecules. And the molecule is a group of atoms, neutral group of atoms. Not positive nor negative, neutral. Here molecule, a group of atoms that are held together by covalent bond. The type of bond here is covalent, sharing of electrons. Types of molecules. The molecules can be diatomic, di means two, means consist of two atoms, such as carbon monoxide, one atom of carbon and one atom of oxygen. Here, two identical atoms of oxygen form oxygen molecule. CO, carbon monoxide, one atom of carbon, one atom of oxygen, and here O2, two atoms of oxygen. Polyatomic molecules consist of three or more such as H2O, water molecule, one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. Sacrose molecule, it's a larger molecule, 12 atoms of carbon, 22 atoms of hydrogen, and 11 atoms of oxygen. This is a unit or a molecule. Molecular formula. Molecular formula stands for the formula for molecular compounds. And they chose the types and numbers of, uh, numbers of atoms combined in a single molecule of a molecular compound. So molecular formula, it's a formula that shows types and numbers. Which atoms and how many. For example, water molecule H2O consists of what are the types of atoms here? Hydrogen and oxygen. How can you know that? From the molecular formula of water, H2O. Well, the number of atoms of hydrogen is 2. Well, the number of atoms of oxygen equals 1. So, water molecule consists of 1 oxygen and 2 hydrogen. So it's represented by the molecular formula H2O, as it has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, and so on. Formation of covalent compound, covalent bond. When two atoms are far away from each other, 
they have larger potential energy and when two atoms are bonded to each other they have lower potential energy as you can see here in the figure here the relation between the distance between two atoms here the distance increases and here the potential energy increases up distance increases to right and potential energy is up when the two atoms are at a larger distance their potential energy is high as the distance decreases move to left the potential energy start to decrease the distance decreases the potential energy decreases decreases till we reach a certain distance at which the potential energy is minimum if the distance decreases the potential energy start to increase again so here in balance the two atoms in balance and this is called the bond length here what are the forces that act between two atoms there are forces of attraction and force of repulsion the nucleus of the first atom which is positive attracts the electrons of the second atom and the nucleus of the second atom attracts the electrons of the first atom here is attraction force while the positive nucleus of the first atom repels the positive nucleus of the second atom and the electrons of the first atom repel the electrons of the second atom so we have many forces the nuclei the nucleus of each atom attract the nucleus of the other atom the two nuclei repel each other okay two nuclei two positive charges repel each other and the electrons of two atoms repel each other because they are negatively charged and the forces balance to form a covalent bond the repulsion force and the attraction force balance at a certain point to form a covalent bond where the potential energy is minimum characteristics of the covalent bond the first characteristic of the covalent bond is the bond length as you can see here two bonded atoms and the distance between the nuclei of the two atoms is called the bond length so the bond length is the distance between two bonded atoms at their minimum potential energy at the minimum potential energy or the average distance between two bonded atoms the average distance between two bonded atoms is called bond length what's meant by the bond length in hydrogen molecule h bond h equals 75 picometer and picometer here is a small unit used to measure the distance between atoms it means what it means the average distance between the two bonded hydrogen atoms equals 75 picometer so this means that the average distance between two bonded hydrogen atoms equals 75 or the distance at which the potential energy is minimum between two hydrogen atoms when two atoms come closer to each other to form a covalent bond energy is released and in opposite the same amount of energy must be added to separate the bonded atoms so when two atoms combine energy is released when two atoms are separated from each other energy is added this energy this amount of energy is called bond energy the energy required to break a chemical bond and form neutral isolated atoms so to break a bond to separate two atoms you need energy this energy is called bond energy what's meant by the bond energy in hydrogen molecule between the two hydrogen atoms equals 
436 kilojoule per mole. Here per mole, kilojoule per mole is the unit to measure the bond energy. Not per atom, but per mole. So, 436 kilojoule is the energy needed to break the bond H, bond H, and one mole of hydrogen molecules. If you have one mole of hydrogen molecules, this energy is needed to form two moles of hydrogen atoms to break down the bonds in the total number of molecules in one mole. Some examples, some values for bond energy and bond length for different bonds. When two atoms form a covalent bond, their shared electrons form overlapping orbitals, mixing orbitals. The orbitals overlap with each other, mix with each other, combine with each other. For example, here, hydrogen. Hydrogen has one electron and one S1 in the first orbital, one S. And another hydrogen atom in one S. So the hydrogen atom needs to complete its level with two electrons. And this one also needs to complete its outermost energy level with two electrons. So they share electrons. And the orbital 1S overlap with the orbital 1S from the second atom and they form hydrogen molecule. Why? This is done to achieve a noble gas configuration, to be similar to the noble gases. So the bonding of two hydrogen atoms allow each atom to have the stable electron configuration of helium. The electron configuration of noble gas is stable. Octet rule. First, we'll discuss noble gases. Helium, the first noble gas, it has two electrons, atomic number equals two. So its electronic configuration on S2. This orbital or this level is filled completely with two electrons. No more electrons are needed. So it's stable. NE10, 10 electrons, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So the second energy level here has 2s and 2p. Two electrons in s and two uh, and six electrons in p. So the outermost or the last energy level has eight electrons. The same for argon. Argon equals Ne which is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3b6. Here the third energy level has 8 electrons. 2 plus 6 equals 8. So the noble gases are unreactive because their electron configuration are stable. This is a stable electron configuration. To have eight electrons in the last S and P orbitals. The stability results from the fact that the noble gas atoms outer S and P orbitals are completely filled by a total of eight electrons. All atoms tend to be similar to this electron configuration of noble gases. So other atoms can fill their outermost S and P orbitals by sharing electrons through covalent bonding. And octet rule, when two atoms tend to form bonds, so that each atom has an eight electrons, octet of electrons in highest energy level. So this is called octet rule. Octet means eight. So each atom tends to become uh, eight to has eight electrons in the outermost energy level or the highest energy level. For example, here two fluorine atoms. Fluorine atomic number equals nine. One is two, two is two, 
2p5. So the outermost energy level, which is the second level, 2, has 2 electrons plus 5 equals 7 electrons. And it tends to become 8. So it needs another electron here. And the other atom, also the same. So what happens here? This orbital overlap with this orbital to form a common orbital between the two atoms. So the first atom will have eight electrons because now these two electrons belong to both of the two atoms. And the second atom has also eight electrons in the outermost energy level. Another example is hydrogen and chlorine. Hydrogen 1s1, it has only one electron, and chlorine 17, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3b5. So in the third, third energy level, the last energy level, it has seven electrons. It needs one to become eight octet. What happens when one hydrogen atom and the chlorine atom combine together? Here, the orbital 1s overlap with another orbital in P. Each, at, each orbital has one electron, so they overlap. And a bond is formed between hydrogen and the chlorine. It's called hydrogen chloride. Thanks for listening this lesson until we meet again the next lesson.